on the Zoom link, and I can't see who's participating. Uh, who wish to speak, please raise your hand. Uh, if there's anyone present, we only have one member of the public present in the NetU Hill room. Not seeing any, why don't we move on then? Uh, can I have a motion for approval of the minutes from November the 9th, 2022? Move approval of the minutes for November 9th, 2022. Second. Thank you. Is there any um, questions, comments, corrections? No? If not, um, call for the roll call. Tron Enright Randolph? Yes. Kenny Gibbons? Yes. Lee Jones? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to stormwater expenditure report for November 2022. Ms. Latonia? All right. Hello, everyone. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Okay, for our November expenditures report, I'd like to go over just a few of the larger items with you. Um, so we're working on finishing out the 2022 budget, and uh, we had a few um, large projects under fleet maintenance um, that had to do with some tire replacements, some replacements on uh, repairs to the grade all. Um, and then let's see, that was part of an additional that we asked for um, back in October for $20,000 um, to go towards um, those grade all repairs. All right. Um, we've had several invoices for flagging services under our new contract. Um, Let's see. And then under um, remote monitoring, that's for the Fieldstone uh, sluice gates. So the software company realized they hadn't billed us yet, ever. And so I received invoices for the past couple of years, which thankfully we had it um, in this account line to we, we could pay it. Um, it wasn't too much money, but since then that has sparked some conversation on the usefulness of the software because currently we've had some issues with it um, not functioning properly. And um, so we've been, yeah, it's it's a whole it's a whole thing. I've been working with Dave on it, honestly. Um, but uh, we're working on hopefully getting that software up and running. If we can't do that, then um, I will be looking into some other options for next year. Um, but for now, we will be seeing these small uh, cell data invoices. Uh, this allows the um, the Fieldstone Dam to talk to the software. And hopefully, one day we'll be able to close it from our phones. That'd be wonderful. That's my goal. Um, so that is that new charter there that you haven't seen before and the reason behind it. Con continuing on our disposal fees for the street sweepings. Um, I do have a summary that uh, Lynette created for a, a summary for 2022, and you'll see the um, how much work the crew has done regarding sweeping, ditching, and other activities. Um, we're continuing on the design of State Road 45, Hines Road, Birch Road design, um, putting in a new storm inlet and acquiring a temporary right of way to hopefully bore a pipe under State Road 45. That's what we determined was the most feasible option for that. And how however feasible it can be to bore a new pipe under a uh, in-dot road. <laughs> so the next step is gonna be discussing with the homeowner across the street and also coordinating permitting with in-dot. Um, we also had some charges for Christopher Burke Engineering reviewing our stormwater ordinance. This was for the updates that incorporated the new state general permit requirements. Um, let's see, fuel usage is still pretty high, um, but we have enough to cover it. And um, Baby Creek and Stip uh, Road projects, I can give you an overview of those uh, projects separately. So, um, I, I do want to say Lynette did a fantastic job going through some of these larger contracts and updating the uh, billing amounts on this report. Um, so we have very you know, detailed tracking now on previous invoices and uh, percent complete for these projects. So thank you, Lynette. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? 
<laughs> yeah, just, I guess, a comment, and maybe that's a question uh, that'll come from it. Um, with the rental of a, a straw blower, um, the only reason I, I'm bringing this up is I'm curious, like the cost of buying one versus renting one, sometimes it's almost cheaper just to buy and purchase a piece of equipment like that than it is to rent one. So I was just um, going to recommend uh, considering that if you haven't, or if you already had and the cost is just, you know, mm -hmm. uh, absorbent or something, because I could see as having repetitive use for something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure Jason Moore um, has looked into it. Right now, we've only used it a handful of times, so it's a pretty low cost to rent it. Um, but it is really great to have one. They It really makes a big difference for them and just the quality of the stabilization. Um, that's something I can talk with Jason about and see if it would be useful for them in the future. Thank you. Right, so like, you know, uh, if it's, you know, not too pricey it might be worth buying so it's also something else to maintain <laughs> that's, <laughs> store. That, that's true yeah yeah we'll look into it any other questions or comments no nope. thank you so we don't need to vote on this right or do we Okay, shall we move on to the next next item now? Okay, so um, the main item I have on the agenda for a vote today is a new task order from Aztec for um, new task order for the Stip Road North Creek Road project with a few things that we're trying to do to wrap up this project to get it ready for construction and to help with that transition. Let me pull this up. I have Adrian Reed here um, who can answer any of your questions on this. An overview is that this task order is um, to cover um, the construction bidding for the two separate sections of road. We're going to do them separately so that we don't have to close the road at the same time. Access to car top, the DNR um, property will be maintained. Um, and so they'll require bidding uh, two separate times. And then a few other items in here, including um, a staking for tree removal um, and uh, in the tree planting plan, sorry, that was the other one I wanted to bring up. The tree planting plan that wasn't in the original contract that we decided we we need to have a planting plan in place um, since we are removing so many trees in the area. So I know a couple of us are greatly appreciative of that. Um, so, <laughs> so would you like to t tell us more about the project? <laughs> Sorry, your mic is off. Is your mic on? I think that's what that was. There should be a a, a green button. There's two buttons right there in front of you. Well, it, it'll there be green. Right there it's like on. It turns green. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I don't think anybody would question the the public need for uh, raising these roads because they flood for a long period of time. And so we're uh, at the end and, and uh, we're trying to... Uh, we, uh, based on funding, we've had to sequence uh, the bids and things like that. Uh, so um, Kelsey's worked with us on uh, working through that, and we're almost we're almost there. We're almost ready to turn dirt. 
It'd be nice to get the projects actually started and yeah. <laughs> move beyond just the, all the Yeah, this, this one, you know, we started as a 300 piece jigsaw puzzle and now it's like 5,000. <laughs> <laughs> it seems it's like it turned into a federal uh, act kind of. So it's, it's been a learning experience for sure. I, I've been on this board for over three and a half years and I know that that project was started before I joined the new board. Yes. So, <laughs> yes, it's mm -hmm. time to, but I, I appreciate the fact too that it's been divided into two sections to allow for a lot easier access and to maintain the roads being open. So I think that's a very nice thing to do for the residents. So, uh, other, other input or comments, yeah. questions? Yes, this will just remind, this has reminded me of something that I've kind of thought about in the past. When you look at our agendas, or actually our financing, and it says the project and then percent complete, if you didn't know, you might think that the road is 93.44% complete. And it's a little disappointing to discover, no, that's only the engineering part. Uh -huh. I can put the word design and engineering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that that would clarify. It. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I think that's an excellent point. I had trouble with that myself um kind of through some of this process um i just have a general i guess comment that um i think just some basic outline of what has been put into this project um kind of these final phases to completing kind of the design engineering work um for the public in a sense uh you know our our packets you know we're moving along with creating kind of a more you know robust packet that has more information but uh prior to getting the two attachments well there was a third one which i i appreciate the chart too where i could kind of see some hours and stuff that was nice um that's not part of this but you know we had a three-page packet with not any information about some of what was on the agenda at first until we that was circulated and then um, it's nice that's here on the packet and you know just you know a very you know outline you know uh, understanding of what has gone into this you know where we're at what we're doing and then just even some pictures you know that would be great especially if we're talking about staking out for trees like a before and after that would be you want to see a, a drawing or two a drawing or two would be amazing too yeah i mean with you know my role in always looking at surveys and just then the surveyor's office and then with the plan commission and looking at you know other surveys and documents and then when i come here it's you know i, I don't really have too much to look at and to review and you know um, whenever i have questions i'll reach out which is great but you know just yeah some designs would be nice or even some photos of the before and after i mean well they um, can't give us the after yet let's let's be clear about that <laughs> right no matter what the agenda says <laughs> yeah. well but i i just i appreciate that because we would like to know what's going to be happening to be able to share with the public and so i'm sure that you've got some ideas you've got drawings i'm sure something oh, that would flesh it out a little bit better the, yes the design has been pretty well complete for right. quite some time it's been the environmental approvals because uh, both of these segments of road are almost entirely on Army Corps of Engineers property. And so that's been a, it a, has a, a long process, process uh, for approval that, uh, you know, not unforeseen, but uh, it's just every every time uh, I encounter something like that, I am surprised at the amount of documentation that it takes. Uh, so that's probably why you haven't uh, seen a lot, a lot of updates to plans and things is because uh we've had the plans uh, for a while and so that, that it never hurts to to 
you know, put them in a packet again, or uh, we have, uh, I just gave uh, Kelsey the tree planting plans for the first, uh, for the first um, tree removal uh, bid packet. So um, she has that information is current and that, that will tell you quite a bit about um, what's about to happen. Right. And it doesn't have to be the entire report, just some of those exhibits mm -hmm. that really give us a better sense of what's happening on the ground. Sure. Um, um, I did have our um, graduate fellows create a one page fact sheet for this project that I hope to begin um, promoting it more to the public. Um, we need to do a better job of posting our large projects on our website. Right now they're just listed by name. So my goal is to have a actual web page devoted to this project where I have general information, links to plan sets and the environmental assessment and FONSI and everything. So that's in the works over the next couple of weeks. Um, and like I said, we've, we've already started it, but it's not quite there yet. Right. I, I commend you on your progress and everything. And like I said, you were able to circulate those. But when I was first looking at it, I was just yeah. a little, what am I looking at? And um, sure. it, I know it's a work in progress and it's going to take some time to get there. But just like I said, even photos of the site or just very, you know, basic, not like full, you know, on like engineering plans, but conceptual ideas, you know, would be very helpful. And I know that, you know, that does take some time, but, you know, it's the, it's that final document that takes a lot of time that has a lot of information, but, you know, just even a conceptual idea of where this uh, new plantings are going to take place or maybe how the road alignment might adjust or, you know, maybe where we uh, put in some infrastructure for uh, stormwater mitigation and drainage. So uh, I'm in complete support. And like I said, I commend you on your work and efforts moving it forward. Just a very uh, general comment I wanted to add. And I'd like to add to that, <clears throat> that it would be probably very helpful to have pictures of the flooding so that the public actually can understand the level of these pro problems. Yeah, that's all explained in the environmental assessment and we do have pictures of flooding in there. So if I understand what you're saying, we're ready to start with tree removal, is that? It, yeah, that, I, that's the, uh, the very next thing would be to, mm -hmm. um, through the permitting, uh, the project is sub subject to the Indiana BAT provision. And so uh, that window closes, I believe, March 31st. And so the, we've got to get the trees uh, down so that uh, so that the project can be constructed. Because if you miss that window, then you- You have to wait until the fall. Until November. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have the easement uh, packet from the Corps of Engineers. And I finally just received um, uh, feedback from Dave Schilling today saying that he's okay with it all. And um, so next up is to resolve a few other comments with the Corps of Engineers, and then we'll be ready for signatures. So the commissioners will see it at their meeting in okay. January. So uh, now that we've grilled everyone, um, is there someone that would make a motion on uh, approving this new task order for the Step Road, Morse Creek Road? I'll move approval for Stip Road slash Morris Creek Road new task order from Aztec for legal descriptions, uh, construction, bidding, staking, and environmental monitoring. Second. And I'll just point out for the record that this is for the amount of $78,760. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there any other discussion that people want to include here? Just move it to the public, even though we don't have them here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there anyone who has any comments or questions? I don't. Anyone on Zoom? I don't see any hands raised. So, um, could we go ahead and have a roll call, please? Okay. Lee Jones. Yes. John Enright Randolph. Yes. Penny Githens. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank today. you. Thanks. Seasons greetings. You too. You too. Okay, Ms. Tony, you want to give us an update on the Baby Creek project? Yes. Um, so this project, um, not quite ready to go out for construction bidding yet, but we're getting close. 
Um, there were just a couple final things to finish up with the drawings. Um, the main um, topic we're working on right now is retaining walls on the side of the structures uh, requires structural engineering. And um, so we're trying to figure out what material to use, how to go about that part of it. So there's been some back and forth on that the past uh, month or two. So that's kind of the holdup right now. Um, I will be resubmitting our 4144 uh, water permits for that once we get the final construction drawings. Um, and there's a wait period after, after those permits are in place, but I hope to um, have it ready to bid this winter. <laughs> Hopefully, that is still my goal. Um, okay. Good. We look forward to getting that started then, also. I and can't again, wait. it's another project that's been in the works for mm -hmm. many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready to move on to staff reports then? Okay. Uh, reminder, I am Erica Penna. I'm the stormwater inspector. Let me just move this uh, out of my way. Um, so I, it's been a while since I gave you a, an update on our construction stormwater side of our program. So I figured now's a, now's a good time. Um, let's see, progress. Taking a, taking a minute of time here. All right, so here's a, a map of our permitted construction sites. Um, I broke it down by color this time to give you a better sense of um, what's actually active. Those are the light blue ones. Um, the dark blue ones and the orange ones are kind of projects that are permitted but are on hold or have moved into an inactive phase, uh, whether they're waiting for final stabilization just to fully establish or um, they've hit a financial snag and have not progressed in quite some time. So we've got about 14 of those, 54 active, um, and year to date, I, there have been five terminated projects. Um, so slowly dwindling, um, but still quite a few active projects. Um, we've had 125 and counting year to date official inspections going out on these sites. Um, that doesn't include just the drive by as I'm, you know, passing on my way to other tasks, other duties. Um, so we're getting out there. We're seeing, seeing these projects as they're happening. Um, some of the most common issues that we're seeing are offsite tracking. Um, we were lucky, some might say, to have a pretty dry summer, so they didn't have to deal, deal with wet mud being tracked, but they did deal with dry, dusty mud, <laughs> not mud, but dry dust um, moving off site. And now we've moved into to winter where uh, things are freeze and thaw and wet, and it's difficult to get that those stabilization measures um, in place when it's this season. Um, several sites are having difficulty maintaining their perimeter controls. So that's a constant reminder. Um, and then applying those temporary and permanent stabilization measures um, as they're progressing and moving to other parts of their project. So another big reminder. So my goal is to inspect all of the high priority active sites on a quarterly basis. And uh, we are able to do that right now. Um, so the high priority sites are, uh, typically larger projects um, and those within our critical watersheds. So that hatched orange area. So those, um, those projects see me a lot more frequently. Um, here's a few inspection pictures. Since you guys uh, don't get to ride along with me, I figured I'd bring, you to the, bring the inspections to you. Um, that top left shows some silt fence that has been overwhelmed by um, grading activities, exposed sediment, um, and that exposed sediment should be stabilized. So that's what we don't want to see. Um, the benefit there is that there 
They have some vegetation on the other side of that silt fencing that would help interrupt it before it really moves far off site. Um, on the right hand side, top right hand side, we have our nice green heart. That's a well vegetated uh, sediment stockpile. Um, they, they moved their sediment there and then got some temporary stabilization in place right away. Um, so that's what we like to see. Um, the bottom left shows, uh, you can see a well protected street inlet. Um, here I'll circle, you can see my mouse there. Uh, down in the middle of the picture. Um, so it's it's covered, it's protected, that sediment's not getting in there, um, but they're tracking out onto their streets um, and they're entering the project area via an unapproved access point. So they should not be driving across that. Um, they were reminded of that, so. <laughs> um, and then on the right-hand side, this is a more of a, a residential project. Um, uh, so it's just a, an individual home build site. W their silt fence needs some minor repairs. You can see that it's fallen down there by the driveway, the top of the driveway. Um, and we'd probably recommend some additional stone on the driveway, um, but it is being accessed only via the driveway, not via any other offsite areas. Um, and the silt fence that's needing repair is in a, a low risk area. Uh, the rest of the silt fence uh, perimeter was intact and, and while protecting the site. So gives you a glimpse of what I see on my inspections. Uh, any questions about those? It's a lot. <laughs> no? Hey. Okay. I, I do appreciate having the pictures so that yes. the, the visuals <laughs> are really nice. Yeah. Um, so one of the other big um, tasks for our construction stormwater program was doing our BMP inventory, so our best management practices. Um, we're inventorying all of the stormwater uh, detention features around the county. Um, so um, as of yesterday, when I put the last a few more in, we have 290 in our inventory. 167 of them are detention ponds, 52 retention ponds, which hold water, um, continuously and detention ponds hold it for a short period of time and then release it. Um, 40 vegetated swales, 11 rain gardens, and um, a mix of few other features. So our goal initially when we started last October was to have it finished by the end of this year. We had estimated that there were about 500-ish um, probably more. So we have not reached that goal, but we have reached items goal of 250, inventorying 250 in our five-year permit period. Um, so we've surpassed that goal and we'll keep adding to it. Um, we're not gonna stop. Um, our next phase using all of this data that we're collecting um, is A, continue adding to our inventory and then B, doing some data analysis. Um, we have this data, we've got a good chunk of data. Um, so what is that telling us about this, the quality of what is out there? Um, so we have rated them on a fairly simple, good, fair, poor ranking. Um, and as you can see, a good chunk of them, uh, more than half are in good condition. Um, some in fair condition, which probably needs some minor repairs. And then 23 are in poor condition, which means they're gonna need a little bit more uh, work than maybe just vegetation clearing or whatnot. So um, doing some of this data analysis and starting to reach out to these poor rated uh, facilities, the property owners or site managers, that kind of thing. Um, so you can see that they're spread around the county. Um, mostly concentrated on the west side of Bloomington and south of Bloomington. Um, so in our critical watersheds. Uh, and then I have some pictures of these too. Um, so the left side is our detention basin, a typical detention basin that we've seen. This picture was taken over the summer. So you can see vegetation is growing in nice and thick. Um, which isn't a bad thing, that's a good thing. Um, we do wanna be careful that concrete structure you see there is the outlet control structure. Um, we wanna be careful about 
too much vegetation encroachment around that. So that would be a, a management recommendation for that site just to uh, create a little bit more clearing around that so that there's less of a chance for obstructions of that. Um, in the middle, we have a, a retention basin. Um, it's a little bit older, so we don't see that type of outlet control structure quite so often anymore. Um, this one is in uh, good condition as well. You've got some vegetation along the banks. Um, you see some, you can maybe faintly see some slightly taller uh, sticks, trees. Um, this picture was taken in the winter, so you don't get the full effect of the vegetation. Um, but we'd probably recommend, especially around that outlet control structure, uh, removing the, those, just cutting those trees, um, preventing their growth, because you don't want trees right near the control, control structures. Um, and the final picture um, is a rain garden. Um, has not been super well maintained, but there is vegetation there. There is a clear inflow point. Um, and again, this was taken in the summer, so nice thick vegetation growth. So we'd probably recommend just weeding out the invasive species, removing um, monocultures and potentially replacing with some uh, other new uh, native species just to spruce it up a little. So as you can see, vegetation overgrowth is one of our most common issues we're seeing, invasive species included in that. Um, we are seeing some sediment and debris buildup at inflow points. Um, and erosion, particularly at inflow points. So when you've got some of that buildup, it, water wants to find the more easy way in. Um, so it's creating some erosion where, where it shouldn't be. Um, any questions on the inventory? Congratulations on exceeding items, uh, expectations, or I guess, uh, placeholder. Um, so congrats. Uh, and I guess I really applaud you with the use of mapping these and integrating kind of that GIS component. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that that was um, put on uh, through your own efforts and initiatives. So I applaud the entire stormwater uh, staff and crew uh, by taking advantage of those tools. Thank you. Yeah, we um really couldn't have done it without the help of our graduate student fellows, Forrest and Marie, and then our summer interns, um, Katie and Kaysen. Um, all four of them have just been, were really great, um, really helpful. I knew I could task them with this and so I could focus on my inspections. Um, so uh, they've been Im imperative to getting us to this goal. And the GIS staff, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, Jared helped us set it up and John has helped us troubleshoot um, issues that hiccups that have come along the way. So it's it's not just a one woman team, it's efforts of many. So thank you. Um, and then I have any other? I, I have one. Uh, when you find things in poor condition, do you generally get cooperation from the owners to do some of the recommended changes or do we need to worry about enforcement issues? We haven't started our um, full outreach yet based on the inventory. Um, that's kind of our part of our next steps. Um, some of our efforts that have been based on com drainage complaints, um, where we go out and investigate a, a, a basin based on a complaint rather than just doing our regular inventory. Um, we have made recommendations to them and I think there's been a mix of, you know, they they want they want to fix the problem, but there's a mix of um, how to go about it and the best way to do it, and they don't always, uh, yeah, they don't always want to hear what we have to recommend. They that. They, yeah, they haven't been held accountable before, so um, it's difficult to be told how to manage something that they haven't maybe been aware they needed to manage in the past. Haven't they haven't budgeted for. So we are um, carefully figuring out the best way to do that um, because we want, we want it to be a positive uh, thing for everyone involved because it, it does impact more than just one person typically. 
for everybody. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I have one more slide for you. Um, we hold our annual contractors workshop. And so this past November at Ivy Tech Lambkin Hall, we had our 2022 contractors workshop, um, which is more than just contractors. Um, we had 45 participants who were design, local design engineers, contractors and builders, um, various local government officials from the city and county, um, as well as from IDEM. Um, we focused this year on erosion controls and best management practices on construction sites, um, spill prevention and response, uh, uh, waterway permitting requirements, local ordinances. Um, and we had a mini presentation on karst topography. It was supposed to be a longer presentation, um, <clears throat> but the presenter was sick. So Kelsey stepped in and gave a, a mini presentation. And a lot of folks said they wanted to hear that uh, in more detail. So we're working on a um, potential spring special session to have like a, a, a focus on that for them. Um, so we had in the pictures there on the right, you can see um, Sage Centel from Ecologic presented on um, various landscaping and uh, best management practices for um, some of the urban stormwater features. Um, and then the lower picture is Evan White from IDEM, who's a wetlands project manager, went over some of the updates to um, 401, 404 permitting and changes to the wetlands uh, regulations and whatnot. Um, so looking forward, um, we'd love to be able to do a, an interactive opportunity for participants, maybe a, a site visit. Um, as I mentioned, doing a special topic series, you know, focusing in on one of these topics uh, at a, a, in greater detail, um, more than just the 25 to 30 minutes that the speaker gets, we do maybe an hour to an hour and a half. So they get a little more uh, a detail and uh, more opportunity to share uh, examples of the topic. Um, and several folks uh, mentioned the Im importance of understanding case studies. You know, we, we present them with a lot of information on, here's the best way to do this. And it's like, okay, well, that's the best way to do that, but is that always the best way? And so case studies on um, successes, turning, turning a, a, a poor situation around, um, managing what nature gives us when we have a really big rain event on a uh, uh, heavily graded site and how to how to work with that. So um, that's what we're looking for uh, towards next year. You don't sit still, do you? <laughs> uh, no, we don't. Any, any comments or questions? Just, I think this workshop's great. Um, I think maybe having that additional one focused on cars features is um, pretty neat. I think we do a good job here in Monroe County and I guess it'd be uh, interesting to see if maybe we'd wanna do kind of a presentation of what we're doing here locally at like a, an ASM conference or something so other counties can learn from what we're doing. Um, I really love having that ability as you know a, a government uh, a employee a public servant um, to help educate others and I think what we're doing is very uh, uh, not necessarily unique but it, it, it's effective and we have our own approach and it, it might benefit other communities to learn from what we're doing here so that's my only real comment yeah, I'd like to thank you for all the work you've put into this. It, it's been really excellent. And it's a real relief to have an inspector, to have someone. I mean, we've had all of these laws, regulations, whatever, for years and years, and no one really needed to follow them because no one knew what was actually going on with them. Mm -hmm. And it actually does make a big difference that people follow their plans mm -hmm. um, that have been okayed by the county. So thank you for taking this on and thank you for doing a good job with it. Thank you.
And I, I appreciate the contractor's workshop. It lets them know what we expect, lets mm -hmm. them know about changes in the regulations. And so keep up the good work. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Titonia, do you have additional items for us that you wanted to share? Yes, I have one more quick presentation here. Okay. I should have Lynette present this. I didn't tell her to, so I will. <laughs> um, so Lynette has spent a lot of time in Cartograph, our asset management software, pulling up a summary of the work the crew has done. And I think the fact that Lynette has been able to do this is remarkable. The fact that the crew has gotten this much work done is also very remarkable. Um, I am just incredibly impressed. Uh, I think we were definitely uh, able to get so much done because of the lack of rain we had in August and September and October. Um, we had very dry fall, so we were able to get a lot of work done. That helps. Uh, we also have a new back truck this year, a new mini excavator that is really versatile. Um, so we have closed uh, a lot of stormwater uh, requests this year. So... As you can see, we opened 342 this year, um, which is pretty standard amount of calls that we get each year and closed 418. That number 418 is what to me is unprecedented. I think that's an amazing um, just show that the, the crew was able to accomplish all of that. Um, uh, summary of culverts, uh, we do replace culverts if it's part of, um, for driveways, if it's part of a larger project. Uh, typically, that's not a, a service that we provide regularly, but for roads that we do a complete um, uh, ditching and repaving work for, then we'll include driveway culvert work for that. Um, there's been a tremendous amount of cooperation uh, between um, highway, bridge crew, and stormwater crews to coordinate ditching, culvert replacements, um, and, and all of that work prior to paving. And we swept 281.9 miles of road in the county. We prioritize the subdivisions with curb and gutter to keep the sand out of the storm inlets and pipes. Um, and then uh, we hauled away over 1,100 tons of sand to Terre Haute. Um, again, that's that much sand that we are keeping out of our waterways. So, um, that's part of it. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So um, the transition to brine will definitely help us um, re reduce the amount of sweeping necessary. And that's what I am really looking forward to that from a water quality standpoint. I've discussed with Lisa and Toby trying to prioritize the karst areas on the west side. Um, right now they're looking at bridges and main roads, but I really want them to try and uh, eventually uh, start using more brine in those areas so we can reduce the amount of sand uh, being put on the roads that it will eventually go to sinkholes. We don't want to be doing that. So, and then 44.7 miles of ditching, which is spectacular. It's a lot of work to, um, you know, do that work on the side of the road for drainage. Um, that's why we need the dump trucks because you're really scraping material away um, and then hauling it off that fill material. Um, so, been a lot of hours, a lot of manpower doing all this work. And uh, and we're addressing all of our, uh, all the complaints that we receive and trying to provide the best level of service possible. So I give all my thanks to staff and, and the crew for all the work they've done this year. Comments and questions? No, I don't, but thank you. It's good to know all of this. Yeah. I think this is the first time we've had this type of report presented to us. So thank you, Lynette. I mean, this is this is impressive. And I, I agree with you that the new brine system may make a big difference all across the county. And this will be a first year that we've had this in place. And so we're all yeah. looking forward to, to seeing <laughs> okay. it too. Uh, it should reduce costs here. It should reduce all these other problems that you're talking yeah. about. Um, has do we have a full second crew in place at this time? Yes. And that's made a difference then yes, too. Yes, absolutely. So yes, we've seen the increase in fuel costs, but this is why. You know, this is all the work that we're doing. So, you know, 
having a full crew, you know, contracting out the flagging so that, you know, two or three other guys can go off and take the back truck to clean pipes. And they really are trying to multitask and get as much done as possible each day. So yeah, having a full crew always helps. <laughs> well, I wanted to comment too, that we, when we went out to see the new um, Karst Farm Greenway, I actually got to see a couple of small box culverts for the first time in place. And so I felt like I, I, I understood what they were and what they, how useful they are. And so as we talk about some of these things, it, it's been a real education for me to, to learn what they, mm -hmm. what they are and, and what they do for the environment, yeah. for our community. So mm -hmm. this is, this is good. And I'm really, really pleased with this. I mean, yeah, I think it's great. It's, it's nice. I like the layout kind of reminds me of a dashboard. Um, if that's kind of your goal to kind of have a live dashboard, um, I, I think it's completely doable. Um, even if we need to crosswalk some of the data from Cartograph to uh, Esri, uh, it, that's a, a possibility to create a live dashboard. So That'd you can cool. you can see this in real time, but um, I really love the the layout, and I guess my one question to Lynette is: um, Is this meant as like a promotional thing? Were you thinking about hanging this up somewhere? It's just, it just, it, it's really <laughs> neat. It's eye catching, and it, it it highlights the work, and it's very easy to understand. And when you kind of scroll down to this street sweeper, it's you know it's a little playful with the street sweeper cleaning up, and it just looks like maybe your intention was to make this kind of a promotional thing to hang or give out. Well, It'll be a be plaque on her desk, right? Yeah, Sorry. Right. <laughs> well, to be honest, my background is kind of working in the public with um, some projects. So when our stormwater maintenance supervisor asked for some totals for the end of the year, I had to put together a flyer like this <laughs> for yeah. him. It's it's real <laughs> intent of developing it down the road. So yeah, it's really Very fun. Awesome. I really like yeah. it. I was planning to do something more in depth with pictures and some other things, but Lynette gave this to me yesterday and I said I needed to show the board today. <laughs> so if you don't mind, would you include it in the minutes for this month so that it'll be permanent part of the record? Yes, that's a great idea. Um, we we have a member of the public who was not on early who would like to make a comment. Would anyone object to having... Um, okay. Um, if Tambi, if you would like to speak, but keep your comments to three minutes or less, please. TSD, can you allow? Okay, you're ready. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you for doing that. I just, we had trouble getting on online the first couple of minutes of the meeting, and then we were after that public comment period. So I appreciate the time very much. Um, my name is Tammy Weichel Cassidy. I'm down here in Clear Creek with my neighbor, Bob Logston, uh, watching uh, this meeting and just want to um, tell you that we are really seeking help down here in this area for sustainable solutions to help mitigate some of the flooding risks and problems that we have in the neighborhood. So just to, um, would really appreciate a closer look at some possible solutions. Um, Bob, did you have anything you would like to say? Yes, please, if I could. I'm Robert Logsdon. I uh, am a lifelong resident of the area, and I have serious concerns about the water runoff down here. I was born right up the street. I'm very familiar with the flooding area here, and with the big dig happening and all of the new construction that's going on out west and east, winding up in Jackson Creek and Clear Creek, the overload is tremendous, and uh, I've seen a lot of flooding down here, and it's getting worse. So uh, there's a lot of natural uh, blockage to Clear Creek, and they're dropping uh, a lot more uh, street water and uh, runoff water into it. Jackson Creek connects to Clear Creek just down uh, the road from me. The uh, west fork of Clear Creek couples in at uh, Church Lane. And the, the creek is just so overloaded, it can't handle it. And I uh, run a business here in Clear Creek that gets flooded in the backyard. And I would like to uh, see if they could uh, work something out to help with the impedance of the water flow. There's a lot of natural impedance to it and some man-made in the area down here in the uh, creek bed. 
So I appreciate anything you can do, any help you could give or any input that I might have on the later, I'd like to know who I could contact about it. I have some video of uh, floods uh, here uh, a few years back and uh, it's uh, each time we have a flood, it seems to be worse than the other. I was born right up the street at the corner of that road and Roger Street. And it never flooded our house there when I was a child, but it gets into that house now and some other houses up the street. So I'm afraid that when they uh, dump uh, the big dig into it, along with all the other projects that are going on and not address the runoff downstream, that it's really going to do a lot of damage to our properties here. And I, I could talk a long time, but thank you for your time. I don't want to. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much for getting on and talking with us. Um, before we close, do any of the other board members have anything that you'd like to add? Just have a wonderful holiday. Yes, um, I'm, I think Tambi has circulated a letter of her concerns, um, both to the commissioner's office, the surveyor's office, I think the stormwater, maybe even highway, and uh, just recently the uh, county council. So. Um, I don't want to jump in front of kind of the process that Kelsey was uh, thinking. So I was just going to ask, do you, our last conversation was kind of moving this forward. And I was wondering if that's still the goal. And if so, if you would like to kind of comment just quickly about that. Yes, um, I have this on the agenda for our January 4th, 2023 drainage board meeting. I think the drainage board would be a good venue to start discussing these drainage issues, uh, providing some direction and you know possibilities for future work um so january 4th 2023 that's a wednesday at 8 30 a.m we'll be in the showers building room 106 d or there will be a zoom link on the county calendar website with um with the call and information if you'd like to join virtually so um so you can join us for that drainage board meeting um well, there'll be some discussion there. Um, but I have a feeling this is going to be a pretty big topic. So, thank you so much for adding that. Yes. Okay. If there's nothing else from anyone, I suggest that we adjourn the meeting. And our next meeting will be Wednesday, January the 11th at on 2023. Oh, <laughs> yeah, at 3 p.m. And until then, I hope everyone has a, a warm and happy holiday and stay safe.